Hey there, let's talk about the protective structures of the cerebral hemisphere, or of the cerebral hemisphere, no, of the central nervous system. So we have meninges that cover both the brain and the spinal cord. We have cerebral spinal fluid that circulates throughout the brain and spinal cord. And then we have a broad blood brain barrier. Um, this figure, which you'll see again, also shows that we have skin, we have bone that protects the, the um, brain and the spinal cord. Um, and then we have the dura mater, which is a very protective layer of the meninges. You can see the arachnoid matter here, and you can see the pia matter. All three of those are the meninges that protect our brain. You don't really see a blood-brain barrier, but you do see that there are blood vessels that move into the brain. And so we'll talk about that um, in the end. So the first of the meninges is called the dura mater. This is a very tough outer layer of um, tissue that um, covers the entire brain. It actually is attached to the skull and then also attached to the brain. Um, the meningeal layer of the dura mater is attached to the brain, so it covers that brain and kind of protects the entire structure. Um, within the dura mater, there are folds called falx cerebri and tentorium cerebelli that you'll see. Well, that you can see, I should say. Um, the next layer is the arachnoid matter. The arachnoid matter is a middle web-like layer. It's called arachnoid because it looks kind of like a web, so a spider web. Um, within the um, subarachnoid space, there's a lot of fluid known as cerebrospinal fluid that is um, circulating. And um, the arachnoid matter, part of its job is to absorb some of that cerebrospinal fluid and return it back to the blood so that we don't have an abundance or an overabundance of um, CSF in our brain or spinal cord. And then the last layer is the pia matter that clings to the brain itself. And so again, um, just so you see, we have the dura mater. These two layers make up that dura mater. The arachnoid matter and then these little structures here are parts of the arachnoid matter called arachnoid granulations that drain CSF, help to move the CSF um, so that we don't have too much CSF. And then um, the pia matter is attached directly to the brain itself. I like this figure because it shows that dura matter really nicely. Um, and it shows the tentorium cerebelli. So you can see that as well. Cerebral spinal fluid then is similar in um, composition, so what it's made of, to the blood plasma. And it's being formed all the time by the choroid plexus. Choroid plexus um, is found within the epithalamus region. Um, and it functions in producing or and it functions in producing CSF, which helps to cushion and provide nutrients to the brain, maintains the chemical environment of the brain. Um, it's produced by the choroid plexus and it's drained continually um, back into the dural venous sinus by the arachnoid villi. Um, and then it flows from the ventricles of the brain to the spinal cord and out. Okay. So here you see um, the different ventricles of the brain. We have two lateral ventricles. We have a third ventricle. And then we have a fourth ventricle. So we have a total of four ventricles that help to um, circulate, produce and circulate the um, cerebral spinal fluid to help maintaining the buoyancy of the brain, chemical environment, and just protection of the brain in general. Here you can see the same things again. Just another view. Um, 
So cerebral spinal fluid is produced in the, in the choroid plexus and it flows through the ventricles. Um, it helps to maintain the um, size of the brain. So if all of the fluid were to be removed, all the CSF were to be removed, our brain could shrivel up and actually fall through that foramen magnum, which would be a very bad thing. Well, we would be dead. So super bad, right? Um, it helps to maintain the chemical stability of the brain. So remember, we have to have a very um, good electrical currency for our brain to work um, properly. And then it um, cushions our brain from any potential blows. So the last thing we'll talk about for protections is the blood-brain barrier. Blood-brain barrier is um, a series of capillaries that have, so they are um, continuous capillaries, but they are the least permeable of all of our capillaries. And then surrounding those capillaries, we have the um, astrocytes that uh, wrap around the capillaries, providing even more protection. So not a lot of harmful substances can get through that barrier. But things that are important, like glucose, water, um, so nutrients can pass through and into that barrier. There are some substances that can get through, like anesthesia, which is important um, so that we can um, not be aware of what's going on when we are having surgery. Um, certain drugs, like cocaine, can get through that barrier. Um, and can actually cause damage to the barrier. So there are certain things that obviously the barrier is not going to be super effective against. But in general, it's very protective and keeps out pathogens and harmful products. The last thing in this video we'll talk about are some basic um, injuries to the brain. So a concussion is kind of like a... Um, bruise to the brain, a very, very light bruise. So um, there's no permanent damage that occurs. Um, concussions are just very minimal brain injuries. But if you have a concussion and then you get on top of that, you get hit again, that can lead to a contusion. So a contusion is damage to the brain that um, can be permanent. So that's like a very bad bruise or even bleeding to the brain it can cause. Okay. Um, if you have two, if you have a contusion that can lead to um, unconsciousness and you can end up in a coma and depending on the severity or the number of blows to the head, you can actually um, end up dying due to contusions. Concussions tend not to cause um, brain death, but multiple concussions on top of each other can definitely cause problems. A stroke or a cerebrovascular accident occurs when you have um, no blood flow to a region of the brain, um, and that region of the brain then dies. So um, this can cause certain areas of the brain or certain areas of the brain to die, which then leads to loss of function of the body. Some strokes can be, um, you can learn functions again. So if you have damage to one side of the cerebrum, um, a lot of times these, the other side of the cerebrum can pick up that loss of information. A transient ischemic attack is um, restriction of blood flow for a short period of time. This can lead to paralysis, numbness, um, impaired speech for a short period of time. So something like if something were keeping you from being able to, to um, have blood flow, you know, if there was something that was blocking blood flow to the brain for a short period and then it was released. So if they were doing, I don't know, some surgery and they squeezed a blood vessel off 
for a short period. Um, that could actually cause uh, numbness, temporary paralysis, stuff like that. But if they're doing surgery on your brain, you're probably not worrying about that stuff anyway. So I guess that's a weird way to say it, but that's what I come up with. Um, that was an example, okay? So at this point, you should be able to tell me um, functions of the meninges. What is CSF? Where is it formed? Where is it found? Um, what is the blood-brain barrier? What's the difference between a concussion and a contusion? So I'm going to stop on this video, and we'll get into the spinal cord for the next video. All right, bye.